Hi, it's uh, Bruce, and welcome once again to my Colorado Rocky Mountain Labs. <clears throat> Today we're going to take a look at a Hewlett Packard 1710A. <clears throat> this is a 150 megahertz scope that uh, debuted somewhere around 1973. Um, <clears throat> Like most Hewlett Packard scopes, they, uh, they designed it meticulously and they executed uh, very methodically and used the best uh, materials. I think at the time, uh, 1973, this was about a $3,500 scope, something like that. Right now we're looking at a uh, 1 megahertz signal. Signal is coming from that... Uh, PTS 500 unit back there, a uh, very accurate signal generator, and uh, we are running uh, on the one volt per division uh, vertical input. So we've got two divisions up, two divisions down, so we're for four volts peak to peak, or two volts peak. Um, we are running at a megahertz, as I said, we have one microsecond showing on the time sweep division. And if I was to go and hit the uh, sweep times 10, you'll see that we cover 10 divisions with one exact cycle right on. Here we're getting 10 individual one division cycles. The, uh, there's plenty of intensity left in the unit. We can take her up, take her down, put her back to where we think it's... Uh, Nice view. That's somewhere in there. Focus we can uh, we can take from a very fuzzy uh, nothing, both directions, and then bring it right back down to clarity. So focus and plenty of um, plenty of intensity. Good thing to show. Has a seventeen thousand volt. Um, uh, high voltage unit on it for the cathode ray tube, which is good because it gives you nice, sharp, clean, bright traces. And it's still working great. Um, so as you can see, we have one signal uh, on there, but wait a minute. Uh, no, we show that we're in the alternating mode. We have two signals on there. But how can that be when you only see one? Well, that's because they're tracking each other very closely, which they should if they're in good cal. So let's see, we've taken a look at intensity and focus. We have a beam finder. If you if your traces are off the screen and you can't see it, you can hit beam finder just to show you that it's there. <coughs> Position controls for A or B. They work nice and smooth. Here's the B. We have a vernier control for finer adjustment of the um, channel input over its range. Same thing for the B side. Uh, we're in calibrated position right now. Okay, I've changed channel A to 5 volts per division and then I could just swing it down to 2 volts per division, 1 volt per division, half volt per division, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.05, and so on. Or, inversely, do the same thing with, uh, with channel B. There's 5, 2, 1, 0 0.5, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.05. We're in alternating mode right now. We could go to chopped mode. And in chop mode, you, you get a, um, a view of the incoming waveform over different periods of time. So it's blinking in and out. Uh, this would be fine for a slower, slower trace. If you move uh, into the chop mode and you are looking at a slower signal like audio, Right now we're coming from a uh, 3320B synthesizer. We're running 
1000 Hertz into here right now. And you can see in chop mode, it's perfectly visible and absolutely uh, acceptable. You'd want to switch to alternating mode if you go up into a higher frequency or you'd run the channels ind independently. I can show you alternating works here too. And that's A plus B, there's B and there's A. Right now we're running at uh, 0.1 uh, milliseconds. So it, if it was at 1 millisecond, uh, that'd be one division uh, uh, per cycle. We're running at 0.1, so it's 10 divisions per cycle, and that's what we're seeing. There's one. One millisecond per division. Point one. No problem. Um, we're running an AC right now. We've got the ground. Let's go back to alternating view. There's A, B. We're triggering off of A right now. We have both of them. We're in ground position. We can go to the DC position. And here again, as long as we don't have a DC offset, we see exactly the same signal. Uh, if we did have a DC offset, you'd see it either up or down. We are in uh, automatic sweep right now. We could go to normal. The difference is in normal that if you're not in sweep, you see nothing. If you're in auto, you, you see a signal that's just changing. And then we can go ahead and get ourselves triggered. So the triggering's working just fine. Horizontal positioning, it's great. Got a fine control, does the same thing for the horizontal positioning. Uh, there's a scale illumination, which in this light you wouldn't see. But in darkness, you would see that the scale lights up. Maybe I'll demonstrate that in a bit. We'll have to close the blinds. Okay, I've dimmed the lights and uh, closed the blinds so that we can demonstrate the scale illumination. Now, if you'll notice, I'm going to turn down the brightness here a little bit so that doesn't affect us so much. And then as I turn up my scale illumination, we should be able to see the grid back there begin to light up. All right. See it? There we go. So that's working. We already tested the times 10 magnification, that switch here, times 1 times 10 for horizontal. Um, we have a single sweep with a reset. Uh, we're doing automatic sweep, so if I went to single, you can see as I hit the uh, reset, it allows one sweep to happen across the screen. Not quite sure why you'd need that, but it's there. We have a uh, DC or AC coupling for the trigger. We can go to line sync. We have high frequency reject or low frequency reject. So if we're having interference from high frequencies, we could hit that button and clean it up. We're, say we're looking at audio. Or if we're looking at high frequencies and we've got audio that's distorting it, we can filter that out with the low frequency reject. Which right now, we are in low frequency, so that doesn't help us. So let's uh, take that off of there. Okay, we're going to demonstrate the uh, calibrator for the probe. It's a 1 volt signal on this unit. Uh, works at, I think, about a thousand hertz. We're going to do that. I've disconnected uh, channel B from the common line. We're going to display on channel B, which I've done that. And I move my trigger to channel B. And then I connect my probe. Probe goes to right here. Didn't want to connect. You could just touch it. Now what I have now is a... Um, one kilohertz signal bouncing one volt per division. Okay, so we're set up with the the probe on the calibration point, the probe calibration point. 
and I've stuck the probe into times 10 position. And uh, this makes the capacitance of the probe um, uh, very important uh, when it regards to the frequency response of the probe and the, and the circuit here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that on my probe, in this case this probe has the calibration point here at the at the handle that connects to the to the scope. Sometimes they're in the probe end themselves over in this area. But we're going to insert a small screwdriver in here and we're going to observe the waveform as I change the, uh, the setting. All right. Now you noticed how we've arced upwards. That's that's where my probe is overcompensated for capacitance and then I'm going to go the other direction that's undercompensated and then if I adjust it so that I get the best looking square wave out I'd say that's just about it right there and then that's when I'm adjusted properly so I'm done using the calibration point alright let's take a look at the uh, delayed sweep. We've actually got two horizontal sweep time bases in here. The one is the main sweep. We've been looking at that and that's where you access that through this central central dial. But then you have a larger ring dial in the back and that's a secondary time base. Right now both of them are running at the same speed. I'm looking at the uh, at the output of the main sweep. But uh, if I was to put myself using this center knob here, take myself from main sweep and go to mixed sweep. Now potentially what I'm looking at is I'm looking at both the regular main sweep and then I'm looking at a portion of it that is the delayed sweep. However, right now it's all the way off to the right. I take my delayed time knob up here and I'm going to start dialing it down and as I do you're going to start to see a brighter image snake its way down across the screen. See it? Okay, now what I can do, the idea is to pick out a section of the, of the trace that I want to see expanded. So right now I'm going to go, I'm going to let the first four cycles happen. And then after that, I want to take a look at an expanded area. Okay, well, right now I've got that selected, and then I'm going to um, take my central knob here, and I'm going to go to the delayed sweep and just take a look at it. And there is the expanded portion of the sweep. I can go back to mixed. I can see the first few sections, and then I can see a section after. Now, if I, if I make the difference between the two time bases more exaggerated by taking the larger ring here, and dialing up, then I'm going to see more of, of more expansion, a bigger difference between the two sweep rates. So I see an expanded, an ever greater expanded vision of what I was trying to look at. And anyway, you see that one, two, three, four, the original four are left alone. And I can rotate through the waveform looking at different sections of it as I as I care to. And that's the idea of the delayed sweep. There might be something interesting on, on a complex waveform where you'd like to zoom in and take a look at that little area <clears throat> without having to change all of the settings and and mess up what you were looking at. So you can do it this way. I'm going to go back to uh, Moving my delay off to the right. Now I'm back to the main sweep basically. Put myself in main sweep mode and we're back to normal. So that's basically it. I mean we've got everything, I've demonstrated I think everything on here. Um, it's in really nice attractive shape. There's really only one thing about it that is a negative and that's that unfortunately the uh, the plastic on the central horizontal sweep knob here has partially cracked off it you know you can still actuate the uh, the sweep rate and change the knob setting but unfortunately uh, 
it's not the most attractive thing to see and and it's got to be difficult to come up with a new knob so I'm going to wind up making this uh, uh, a much better price because uh, I realized that that is a negative however the rest of the uh, the front panel is in beautiful shape the cabinet is in good shape the stand works all of the inner workings are in good shape. In fact, I have a couple of photos that uh, will be on the uh, eBay website for you to see. In the back we have um, a gate output, a, uh, uh, a main gate output, and a sweep output back here. And then we have an input for uh, z-axis where you can uh, actually change the brightness of the trace as it go across the screen. I've seen people actually make uh, black and white photos or images on the screen, sort of like a black and white television, and uh, by feeding in those signals. Not, uh, I will sub uh, will provide a, um, a calibration uh, calibration service manual on uh, in PDF format on a CD will be sold with this so you'll have a good idea how to how to maintain it and go through a calibration on it um, other than that I thank you for listening and happy bidding to you bye